You are listening to King Jesus Radio, the official podcast of New Living Way Church. My family first came here. They were the ones that were up here dancing and singing, you know, and, you know, they got us to be involved in a lot of different skits and stuff like that. And just been such a blessing to see the growth and the maturity and how the Lord has just blessed you and your family. So, you know, keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. He is the resurrection and the life and he knows all things. Amen. So we serve a mighty God, an awesome God. And how many of us know that we are to glorify the Lord? Amen. It's all about Jesus, to glorify him, to glorify his holy name, his presence, to glorify all that he is because it's only about him and him alone. It has, it's not about us. It's about Jesus. Amen. It's all about Jesus. Praise God. Well, we're just grateful to the Lord to be here this morning. Uh, we do apologize to those watching with us online. It looks like we've had some uh, sound issues. We're not quite sure what's going on. So I've asked them, well, pray. Hopefully the Lord will, will set that up straight, right? But we're not too sure. We couldn't find out where the connection is. So we do apologize for those that are watching with us online today. But everybody can hear okay in here, though? Everybody okay? Amen. All right. Even without a mic, we'll make sure, right? Praise God. Amen. Well, let's, let's turn our Bibles this morning to Psalm 150. 15 today. Amen. And I'm grateful to the Lord this morning because, you know, we started service at 10. So that means I could still go to about one. Amen. And we'll be all right. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> oh, you thought we started early to end early. I got you. All right. <laughs> So Psalm 115, we're going to look at a verse, we're going to look at the whole psalm actually, but we're going to go a little, break it down verse by verse for right now. Father, we just thank you this morning, Lord God, and we give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we just thank you for this time together today, my God. We thank you, Father God, that, Lord, it is all about you, Lord Jesus, and we are just so grateful, my God, because, Lord, that's what we're here to do today. We're here to glorify your name. We're here to magnify your name. We're here to lift your name on high, Lord Jesus, because, Lord God, you are greater than every circumstance, every situation, my God, every trial, my God, every temptation, every testing, my God. Father God, you are greater, Lord Jesus. And Heavenly Father, we just thank you today because we are here to acknowledge you, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, Lord God, the one who is high and lifted up, Lord God. And Father God, God, we are just so grateful to you this morning, Lord, and we just ask you, Lord, to lead us, to guide us continually by your spirit, Lord. Teach us this morning, Lord. We're here to seek you, Lord God, that you would speak to us through your word, my God, because we believe that your word is you speaking into our hearts and into our lives. And Father God, we know that your word is sharper than any double-edged sword, my God, penetrating to even dividing soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and judging the thoughts and the attitudes of our hearts and father god for nothing is hidden from your sight lord god but everything is is open and laid bare before you to whom we must give account to lord so father we thank you lord as your word falls on good ground lord god we thank you lord that it is you that has prepared our hearts this morning lord and we thank you father god because lord it's with those hearts that have been prepared that we were able to bring praise and worship to you this morning father in unity and one accord as a body of christ lord god so we just thank you this morning lord god father in the name of jesus Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for you are faithful, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Well, we're going to look here at Psalm 115, and we're going to start at verse 1 this morning. And it says, I love this, it starts off with, not to us, who's us? us. us. Okay, all right, praise God, amen. We're on the same page, amen. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. For the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Amen. So I love this because it opens up with this psalm saying, Lord, to your name we give glory. Not to us, not to me, not to anyone else, Lord God. But Lord, I want to start this psalm by saying, Lord God, it's not about me, but it's all about you. And I'm here to give your name glory because, Lord, you are faithful. And he says it right here. Why do we give him glory? Because he's faithful. Because of his steadfast love and his faithfulness. How many of us this morning are thankful for God's steadfast love and his faithfulness to me and you today? 
Are we here today because of the steadfast love of God and the faithfulness of God this morning? Amen. And we have the greatest name. The name that we give glory. And whose name is that? Jesus. Amen. Whose name is that? Jesus. Praise God. Amen. And we get to see the promise fulfilled. We get to see this word come to pass that says because of his steadfast love and his faithfulness, we see this in Jesus. Because Jesus is the fulfillment of the promise of the covenant that God made with the children of Israel, but not only the, to them, but to the whole world. Because his word says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, but whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You can never get tired of that scripture. You can never say it enough because it's the heart of God. To know for God so loved the world that he was willing to send his son to die in our place. To take the sin, to take the rejection of God, to take the rebellion, to take the disobedience, to take the fallen nature of man and place it on his son. So that me and you can have a relationship with him through him. Because it's only because of what Jesus did for me and you that we are able to rejoice and celebrate today as we sang today because of the finished work of the cross. And because Jesus was willing in obedience unto the Father to come and die the death that me and you should have died. But he did it willingly because of his love for me and you, because of his love for the world today. And you know what's even greater is? That love still remains steadfast today because that promise is still today and it doesn't change. And I thank God for that steadfast love is because I know every day that I can come to the foot of the cross. I know when I'm hurting, when I'm fearful, when I'm doubtful, when I'm angry. Yes, I get angry. So do you. <laughs> when I have questions, when I have doubts. When you trip up, somebody said, well, Brother Oscar, Friday, a shortcomer. <laughs> you got some shortcomings. But I thank God that me and you can come to the foot of the cross. We can come to Jesus because that love is steadfast. And he is faithful to receive me and you. And because of that, we can come boldly and with confidence before the throne of grace and obtain mercy in our time of need. We can come into the Holy of Holies because of what Jesus did for me and you. So again, not to us, O oh Lord, not to us, but to your name, give glory. For the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Verse 2 and 3 says, Why should the nation say, Where is their God? <laughs> Our God is in the heavens. And he does all that he pleases. Do you realize that God doesn't need for me and you to defend him? <laughs> Do you ever think about that? God's not getting bullied. But how many of us know that he's our defender? He is your defender and he's the one that defends me and you. We stand according to his word. We stand by faith in him. But it's not our job to defend God. He's our defender. But it's in that faith in believing who he is that makes me and you separate today. Now, we may have grown up in part of the in crowd. We may have grown up as one that was rejected. We may have grown up as one, you know, maybe they saw as a loner. It, no matter what our background or no matter what our upbringing was. Today, because of your faith in Jesus Christ, you are now separate and holy unto him. But that won't always be easy. That won't always be come with people receiving you or loving you. But always remember, it's not because of you, it's because of your faith in Jesus. It's because of the one who you belong to. 
It's required by us daily to pick up our cross and to follow Jesus. To die to self. Because following the Lord will not always be popular. Following the Lord will not always seem favorable. But for those who believe, know there is nothing else like it. There is nothing else like it in the world. Because our God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Our God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And not only that, our God is alive. He is alive. You serve a living God today. You serve, we serve a living God. So when we're praising him, he's receiving that praise. When you're worshiping him, he's receiving that worship. When you're hearing from him, it's because he is speaking. When you're reading his word, he is speaking to me and you. When you are praying, he is hearing you. And he is answering you according to his will and purpose. When you are continuing to get up every morning and go to work, when you go to school, when you go pay the bills, when you're just doing the normal functions of life, you're not alone. You got a living God with you and in you. And greater is he that lives in you than he that lives in the world. And he is for you today and not against you. And if God be for you, then who could be against you? He is alive. And that's why we're celebrating today. But again, we shouldn't just wait till Easter. We shouldn't just wait till, you know, Sunday. This should be every day. Acknowledging, Lord, you are alive. It goes on into verse 4. Through 8, it says, Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths but do not speak, eyes but do not see. They have ears but do not hear, noses but do not smell. They have hands but do not feel, feet but do not walk, and they do not make a sound in their throat. Those who make them become like them. And so do all who trust in them. See, it talks about the difference between their God and our God. Our God is alive. But for those who follow after idolatry, who have made idols to be their God, gods that have no life within them, he says those who make them and those who put their trust in them become like them. And what is he saying? Those idols are lifeless, so therefore we become lifeless when we put our faith in lifeless things. See, God warned of this in the Ten Commandments. He says, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not worship any carved images. You shall not serve the things that are created, but yet only serve him, the one who is the creator. God did not create the sun and the moon to worship what he created. He created it to light the, the day and to light the night. He has a reason and a purpose for all his creation, but it was never meant for me and you to worship or to serve or to praise these things that were created by God. He is a jealous God, and he will share his glory with no other. And that's why he is very strict, very stern in this. He says, why are you worshiping the creation when you could be worshiping the creator? The one who's alive. There's nothing wrong with admiring creation. I love the beauty of nature. I love the beauty of God's creation outside. But I thank God that he's opened up my heart and mind to look to him and say, Lord, thank you for the sun that is shining today. Thank you for the moon that lights the night. Thank you for the wind, that, that cool breeze that just comes in at the right time. Thank you for the trees. Thank you for the animals. Thank you, Lord, for the beauty that you have given us to enjoy every day. It's such a beauty. But again, it's giving God the glory and nothing else and no one else. 
Because how many of us know that we were lifeless at one point in time? Maybe it wasn't a carved image. Maybe it wasn't a little statue. But maybe it was an addiction. Maybe it was a relationship. Maybe it was a desire, something that had me in you that we were so focused on it. For me, it was anger. And I allowed that to drive me. Not realizing it to become an idol in my heart. Because it started to control me. It started to become a part of me to a place where it was even part of my character to make my heart cold. Because those who make them become like them and so do all those who trust in them. It became an idol in my heart. And many times we have these things within our lives today that become idols within our heart. How do you know it's an idol? Are you putting it before God? Are you seeking it more than God? Are you seeking that relationship more than God? Are you seeking what you desire more than God? Are you more concerned about your life than you are with your relationship with God, who's the one that gave me in your life? See, God gave us life so we could live for him. He gave us life so we can be in a right standing relationship with him. But today, because you put your faith in Christ, you've rejected everything else and you've been delivered. We have been delivered and set free from the bondage of sin, from being blind, the bondage of death. And now we have life in Christ today. Yeah. And you know what's amazing about that is, as he says, they be, we become like all those who trust in those idols when we put our faith in that. Well, how many of us know that when we put our faith in Christ, we now become like him? We become like him, alive, born again. Something that Nicodemus couldn't understand. Wait a minute, I got to go back in my mother's womb again? No, that's gross. <laughs> but that was his only logic no it is to be born again to be made whole to be born of the spirit but he couldn't understand it was by putting his faith in Christ Jesus so that he could have life so that we could be like him let's go to Romans chapter 6 We're going to read verse 1 through 14 here. I'm going to let God's work speak for itself. Amen? Amen. He says, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who die to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Did you catch that? I'm going to read that again. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Amen. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ... We believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. 
So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. I'll read that again. Do we believe that? So do you also, so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. How many of us know today because you are now dead to sin, you are alive to God in Christ Jesus. You have been raised from death to life. So now we are like him. Verse 12 says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. Oh, let's give the Lord some praise on that. Amen. That's his word. It's because of Christ today that we are now alive to God the Father. We are made new. The Bible says that we are a new creation, a new creature. Behold, the old things have passed away, and behold, all things are made new. We are, yes, we identify with the crucifixion of Christ, saying, yes, Lord, I have died to my old self, to my old ways, but I'm also identifying with your resurrection. With that resurrection power that has given me life today. And even when my body is acting like there's no life in it, and even though the Bible talks about the older we get, this body starts to deteriorate a little bit. Amen? Can we agree with that? <laughs> this body is not the same as it was 20 years ago. <laughs> right, Brother Frank? But you know what? Well, because he raised his hands. He's in agreement. We're in agreement. But I thank God that this life is only temporal. I thank God that we're just pilgrims passing through. So even though it may, the back may ache a little bit more, even though some things may not function the way they should, and even though it may take a little longer to heal from soreness from building a basketball court, you know what? We are alive to God today, and it is eternal life. And we could be grateful to the Lord today because even in death, we still live. Because we live unto God and we belong to him. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2, verse 28. And we're going to read 1 John chapter 2, verse 28, and then chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. He says, and now little children abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. See what kind of love the father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But what we know is that when he appears, we shall be like him. Because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. See, it doesn't talk about our works but it talks about we will be like him and we are purified because of our faith in him. Because of our faith and what he has did for us. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to purify us of all unrighteousness. So even in all the righteous things that me and you do, we cannot earn that salvation. We cannot earn that life. We have that life today because of our faith in Jesus Christ, his crucifixion and his resurrection. And that is the life that me and you have today. 
We have life because of that faith today. And his word says, and that we shall be like him. But do we believe this today? Then we realize that this life is not all there is. This life is not all there is. Enjoy this life. Enjoy every moment that God has given me in you. But always know, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. You can enjoy the life that God has given me in you. He's blessed us. He's blessed us with one another. He's blessed us with the very breath of life today. And we can rejoice because of it. But now we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm not going to tell you we're going to stop, okay? So we're going to start at verse 17. Because remember, we will be like him. Verse 12 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says, did I say 17? I'm sorry, I meant verse 12. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God. Because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins, then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. Imagine if I just stopped there. <laughs> so, right? It's like, what happened to the service? <laughs> Imagine if the word of God just stopped there. But Paul is bringing this out because there was a teaching and preaching that there was no resurrection. There was no raising the dead. And the Pharisees did not believe in resurrection. So Paul is addressing this situation and he's saying, well, if there's no resurrection, then it's all pointless. Because if it's only to serve Christ in this life, then it's all meaningless. And he's saying if that's the case, then the church is to be pitied. Because without the resurrection, there's no hope. There's no life. Then that would mean that the sacrifice was not accepted. Okay, I'm going to keep reading though. <laughs> but verse 20 says, But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he, expect, he is expected to put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him, who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. Otherwise, what do people mean by being baptized on behalf of the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized on their behalf? Why are we in danger every hour? 
I protest, brothers, by my pride in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die every day. What do I gain if, humanly speaking, I fought with beasts at Ephesus, if the dead are not raised? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Wake up from your drunken stupor as is right, and do not go on sinning, for some have no knowledge of God, and I say this to your shame. But some will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person. I love the way Paul talks, huh? What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind for animals, another, I'm sorry, another one for not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is of one kind, and the glory of the earthly is of another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for stars differ from stars in glory. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. Oh, but here it is. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. I got that. But it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. But it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body but it is raised a spiritual body. And if there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man Adam became a living being, but the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust, which is us. And as the man of heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. Just as we have been born the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. See, we celebrate the resurrection of Christ because of our faith in Him and because of the life we have in Him, but we're also celebrating the fact that me and you today and all those who put their faith in Christ Jesus will also be resurrected, also have eternal life, and also will be raised on that last day. So we don't need to fear. We don't need to worry about what tomorrow will bring because we have no control over that. The Bible says you can plan and do all this, but always do so in a sense to say, but if the Lord wills, because only he knows. I'm not saying not to plan that vacation, got summertime coming up, but it says the Lord wills. It's as he wills for our lives, but we know today as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, We are also celebrating today that, God, we will also be raised again as well. But it's because of you today that we have life everlasting. And it's because of this message today that many others today will be able to come to know the Lord for themselves. It's more than just religion and tradition. It's a relationship, a life-giving relationship for me and you. And it's because of that relationship today that me and you have life. But how do we know this? How do people put their faith in Christ today? Why can't Christ just send a bunch of signs and, you know, wonders and miracles? Why can't Christ just raise up the 500 from the graves again and then everybody will believe? (laughs) Because God doesn't do that. He doesn't work that way at all times. But what he has given us is his word. 
that declares it to be so. Let's look at Luke 16, 27 to 31. We're almost coming to a close here. This is Lazarus and the rich man. Luke chapter 16, verse 27 through 31. And he goes on to say, and he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. See, it has to be faith in believing what God says. We can pray that God will do a supernatural miracle in someone's life, and He can. But how much more powerful is it when we're able to pray, God, open the heart of this individual from your word that they can see you and know you and put their faith in you. Because it's your word, Lord God, that confirms your promise and your truth because of faith in you and believing in you. Let's go back to Psalm 115. We're going to close up here. Psalm 115, we're going to continue reading on in verse 9 through 18. See, because of this, because we have faith in Christ today and because we're here celebrating the resurrection of our Lord, I encourage you to receive this word this morning because this is a blessing for those that are like him. Amen? Amen. O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shields. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shields. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shields. The Lord has remembered us, and He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. May the Lord give you increase, you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to the children of man. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor do any who go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Woo! Because of the resurrection of the Lord, our praise does not end here, but that praise will go on for all eternity. Because even when we stop breathing here, we stop breathing there. And the same praise we have here, we take with us in the resurrection. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. We exalt your holy name. Oh, we don't have to wait to get to heaven to praise God. It's because of that resurrection today that me and you are like him. It's the songs that we're singing here. 
That's supernatural. There is a supernatural presence, and that's because it's the presence of God. Where two or three are gathered, there he is in the midst. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. So when you decide to set everything aside and start praising God, you're not just serving a statue. You're not serving a dead God. You are serving, we are serving the living God. We are praising the living God. And we know that our God is pleased because we are like him because of our faith in him. Oh, hallelujah. And because of that, we have overcome. You may face trials and tribulations. Oh, but be of good cheer. Because Jesus has overcome the world. He's not in that tomb no more. He's not on the cross no more. The Bible says that as he ascended, he was blessing them. And he ascended on high, and the angel said, why do you keep looking up? The same way you saw him go is the same way you're going to see him come back. And because of that resurrection, <laughs> we don't got to fear the wrath or judgment of God. We can rejoice that our Savior comes. Amen? Amen. Because our Savior comes. Hallelujah. <laughs> and just know, because you have a living God with you, you can live in the boldness and the confidence of who your Savior is and who our Savior is. You can walk by faith and not by sight and know, God, you are for me today, and I am going to bless you. And we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you this morning. We glorify you this morning. We worship you this morning. You are holy, O oh God. You are holy, Lord Jesus. You are holy, O oh Lord. And Lord, we are here to magnify your name, the name of Jesus, my God. We bless you this morning, O oh God. As your word says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, O oh God. We will bless your holy name, my God. And Father God, we thank you today that, Lord, we don't have to stop praising you. We don't have to stop blessing you. We don't have to stop glorifying you, God, because, Lord, we are now like you, Lord, because we have been made alive in you, Lord Jesus, and now we are alive to God the Father, and we are alive to one another, and though, my God, we may be a stench of death to those that don't believe, but, Lord God, we are, Father God, Lord, the, just an aroma of life to those who do believe my God so father we just thank you this morning Lord God we thank you Lord as we are able to celebrate your resurrection my God because we know and believe that you rose again my God and because of that you have given us life and we thank you today Lord Jesus as you raise up them dry bones my God as you raise up those that are blind today those that are in bondage today, those that are lost today, those that are backslidden today, my God, those that are wise in their own eyes, my God, we thank you today, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you can resurrect them, my God, that you can draw them back to you, Lord God, that you can bring them back to a place of praising you and glorifying you, my God, that you can raise them up from darkness and bring them into your marvelous light, my God. But, Lord, we know that only you can do so, my God. But, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name, to help us to be a people that will let your light shine, Father, through our lives my God that others can see you Lord and your love that you have for them Lord God oh we just thank you this morning Lord God we thank you Father God that you are so faithful we thank you for your steadfast love my God we thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding and it is you that guards our hearts and minds on our Christ Jesus today we thank you, Lord, that we don't have to fear your second coming. But, Lord, your word does tell us to be watchful, Lord, to be aware, my God, to look up for our redemption draws near, my God. So, Father, help us to be a church that is ready. Father, God, help us to be the bride that is ready, my God. 
Help us to be attentive to you, Lord God, seeking you, Lord Jesus. Because, Lord, your word says that you will come like a thief in the night. Oh, Lord Jesus, but Lord, your word says that those that are dead in Christ will rise first, and then we that remain shall rise next, my God. Father, there are many thoughts and many different teachings on this, my God, but Lord, we don't fully know, my God. But Lord, we do believe that we will be risen up with you, Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you today. That, Father God, you are our hope today, and it is a sure hope, Lord. And, Father God, we are celebrating this day because, Lord, your word says you are no longer in that tomb. You, are not, you weren't there, but you are risen, Lord. But you are also ascended on high. And, Lord Jesus, we know that your return is soon, my God. And, Lord, we choose today, my God, and determine within our hearts today, Lord, in unity, my God, that, Lord, we will be the ones that, Father, yes, you will still find faith on the earth, Lord. That we as a body of Christ, Lord, yes, you will still find faith on the earth, Lord. But not because of ourselves, because, Jesus, you are alive within us, Lord. And it is you that keeps us, Lord. Father, we just thank you this day. We give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. We thank you for this time, Lord. And we just bless your holy name this day, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a shout this morning. Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. We serve a good God. Remember, not to us, but to who be the glory? To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Well, you have a blessed rest of your day today. Enjoy the time and whatever you do. And just know that we serve an awesome God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We are dismissed this morning. And uh, remember, Bible study on Wednesday. Amen. Thank you guys all for joining us. On